From Fox 8 Sports, this is the Overtime Podcast. From the Fox 8 Studios in New Orleans is the Fox 8 Overtime Podcast. I'm Basilios. That is Sean Fazan. Remember to like and subscribe, rate, and review. You can find us wherever you listen to and watch your podcast. And if you're watching on YouTube, hit the little bell notification button. You get a notification every time we upload a new podcast. Sean, it is another Wednesday in the (laughs) Saints world. A busy Wednesday. You're telling me. (laughs) So... Uh, how so? Let's. We obviously know Derek Carr has been here. We talked about it ad nauseum mm-hmm. last podcast. How did he look today? I mean, it's strange that he didn't practice today, but yet he was still made available to the media. What did What did you glean from that well, the, availability? Uh, uh, yeah, it, it, today did not go as I expected to go with what is the current situation with Derek Carr. First and foremost, we get out to practice. He's there. He's in great spirits, nothing on his shoulder, no, no sling, no cast, no anything to hold the shoulder in place. He's laughing. He's talking with coaches. He's, in a little bit we were able to see, he's kind of going through the mental reps and kind of, you know, as James is throwing the ball, he's kind of behind him throwing. He didn't participate at all, but he was very present. I'll just put it that way. He was very present at practice, and Jameis took. I, I, I don't. We only we only allowed to see the first few minutes. Everything I saw looked like Jameis was doing the first team reps. It looked like at some point Taysom Hill was uh, mixing in as well. So that was one thing. And then I didn't expect him to talk today because, generally speaking, the Wednesday afternoon press conference is with the starting quarterback. Mm-hmm. So we can do the math here. It's Wednesday. <laughs> it was in the afternoon. And then lo and behold, we get the we get the heads up that Derek Carr is talking to the media. Now, it may not seem like seem like a huge deal and it may not be maybe I'm reading too in, too much into it, but I don't I don't think I'm crazy because you know, last year when we were in London, if you recall, Jameis had gotten hurt the week before. And when we got to London, we walk out to practice, Jameis wasn't there, and it was a different kind of injury. And then but they were still saying, you know, he could go. Wednesday, Andy Dalton ended up talking to the media. I mean, it was blatantly obvious that Andy Dalton was going to go. Now, Jameis ended up talking to us Friday in the week that week, and you could just tell in his body he wasn't starting. That wasn't the case with Derek Carr. That was not the case with Derek Carr. First off, like I said before, he talked in the quarterback spot, and I mean, (laughs) I, I try to pick up body language. Like I said, last year in that situation, it was... It was abundantly clear who was starting in that game. I don't have that. I don't. I don't. I don't think it's that obvious. I think Derek Carr is planning on playing, or at least true, doing all he can to play in this game. Like I said before, Drew Brees missed a game, but it's possible to not miss a game based off the grade, the pain tolerance, the functionality. I actually think it's more of a functionality thing as opposed to pain tolerance because these guys are NFL players; they have pain tolerance. He basically went through. It was pretty open. You know, he said, "I like talking about." Injuries, but he's pretty open about his mindset. He says he's preparing to play. If he can play, he will play. If he physically cannot play, then he won't do it and obviously hurt the team. But he also said he doesn't feel like he would need to practice to play on Sunday, which was interesting to me because, you know, this is a fairly, this is a new team for him, you know, wrapping through things. And he felt like as a 10 year veteran, not as a rookie, you know, he could potentially pull that off. And, Sounds to me, if it's up to him, he's going to give it a go on Sunday. So if you had asked me Monday, I'd say he's out at least a week, if not more. He's out at least a week. I I think it's Jameis Winston's show uh, against Tampa. But now, I think there's a shot. I think there's a shot he plays, and it really boils down to whatever percentage he is. 65, 70, 75, 80. We know he's not going to be 100%. Whatever he can give you, can you devise a game plan that helps you beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? And does that combination, is that a better outcome than 100% or or healthy Jameis against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? I was about to ask you the same thing. That's the question. And remember this. Derek Carr is DA's guy. Derek Carr is DA's guy. So my, I guess my point is, yes, you want to protect your investment, but also DA believes in Derek Carr. And if Derek Carr says, look, I want to give it a shot, 
I, I think there would be a chance that Dennis Allen would oblige. Now, in saying that, I still think I'm, I'm calling it 50-50 because I still think there's some realistic things the organization would need to see before they can fully say, yeah, you can go. But that I was not at 50-50 before today. Mm. Now I am at 50-50. <laughs> so we'll see how tomorrow goes. We'll see if he practices. We'll see if Friday he practices. But, um, yeah, a, a very in, interesting day out at Saints camp. And who knew? This was supposed to be the Alvin Kamara week. We're not even really going to touch on that in this podcast because uh, it, it so much happened with Derek Carr. And, you know, Alvin Kamara talked, and it was supposed to be his, his – his, you know, he talked to us. It was supposed to be his day back, and, well, I was supposed to top everything off. We're going to get that get to that on Friday, but it really was a, a an interesting day out at Saints camp, and I, it's what we do. It's what we do. So we're here for it, and um, so we'll see what happens with Derek Carr. In the situation, if they do not go with Derek Carr on Sunday, how do you feel about Jameis Winston and his chances to lead this team to a victory against his former team, the Buccaneers? Okay, well, first off, because we had a couple questions about this. It's going to be Jameis Winston if Derek Carr can't go. It's not going to be Taysom Hill. I mean, Dennis Allen was pretty firm in, in response to that question today. He said, no, that was not a consideration. No, I still think there's a blend there between Taysom Hill and, and Jameis Winston. With Jameis Winston obviously getting the majority of the quarterback reps. Okay, so can they win against Tampa with Jameis Winston? Yes. Yes, they're not playing Tom Brady. They're not playing Tom Brady. Yes, they absolutely can. Can they, they lose? Can absolutely, they can lose. <laughs> absolutely, they can lose. That's just reality. So, what has to happen? Well, in my opinion, and this is my opinion as someone who has watched a lot of Jameis over the years, both in practice, in the locker room, and in games. Jameis can't try to do too much. Jameis is at a different spot in his career here in New Orleans, his career in general, but here in New Orleans in particular, it's not 2021 anymore. He's not out to prove he's not the guy he was when he left Tampa or even last year where he was out to prove he was healthy and can lead the team. Sometimes I just felt like he was trying almost too hard to prove who he is or who he was not. All that's out the window. Your job is to come in, keep the ship afloat, and help your team get to a victory until the starting quarterback can return, whenever that becomes. So to me, that kind of takes the pressure off Jameis. Mm -hmm. Tru if he embraces that, well, Jameis has got high energy. Sometimes you don't always know. Mm -hmm. Trust the coaches. Trust the game plan. Now, the coaches, they have to realize what did and did not bring success with Jameis Winston at quarterback. Frankly, you go back to 2021. That 6-7 game window, they went, I guess, technically 4-2, and and then the fifth, the seventh game, he started but got hurt, I think, in the second quarter. It was ball control, run first, calculated shots, um, pretty defining what the reads are because, generally speaking, when Jameis goes from read one to read two, that's when sometimes he can get a little, a little shaky there are times he can get fooled on um, reading on 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 a exotic blitz pressure. You know, mm. Tampa Bay knows him. They're going to do that. They're going to do that. He threw three interceptions against them last year, and they're just they're going to do that. So to me, that that's where it has to that's where it has to be. And if you're Jameis, if you get the call, relax and go play ball and do what the coaches say and let the pressure be on the coaches to come up with the right game plan to take them to victory. If he does get the call, and I kind of mentioned this in the sports office the other day, does he use this as an audition when Carr comes back healthy, when Jake Hayner returns from suspension? Does he use this as an audition to maybe end up on another team at the trade deadline or before the trade deadline that is quarterback needy? Is that possible? Well, well he's always been available. And, you know, it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world to have an, uh, a – you know, freshen up the tape, so to speak, yeah, exactly. with, with a good performance. But I don't think, I don't think Jameis should adopt that mindset. I think Jameis should adopt the, you know, the Gardner Minshew mindset. You know, he's 
you know, I'm sorry, you he beat your boys uh, last, <laughs> last week in, in Baltimore. <laughs> To me, yeah, he's he's true. the top backup quarterback in the NFL right now because he embraces bring it up. he embraces that role when his numbers call. He does what he has to do, and then he checks back out when it's time for the starter to come in, whoever or whenever that time may come. I think that's the task at hand for Jameis. Mm. What could come of that of him performing well is certainly could be in his sight, but that's not the main goal. But if he does well, certainly there could be a team or two that says, you know what, maybe I'll pick up the phone. You know, maybe I'll call someone. You know, maybe I'll call the Saints to see if they, there's, there's bound to be another injury at some point mm. to a key quarterback. So I don't know if he uses it as the audition, but I, I think he, he can freshen up his resume, freshen up his tape. If he just, to me, it's all about mindset with Jameis because some, he's the, he is such a high-energy guy. You, sometimes you got you to gotta channel that a little bit and allow him to just <laughs> level out. Level out. And just execute the game plan. If he does that, and the defense is the defense, I think they can beat Tampa Bay with Jameis Winston at quarterback. Because there are times where it comes together for Jameis, and it looks fantastic. Why not this weekend? Why not this weekend against his former team? But then here's the other thing. He's too far removed from the former team thing. To mm. I, I, to me, that can't be motivation anymore. Yeah, I, t- so. I'm, all of, I'm all about that. That generally works a year or two out. You're not four years out. I, I just don't I don't see that as motivation for Jameis. I hope that's not because sometimes he can get in trouble doing that. Because like I said before, some that mm. that can allow you to do a little bit too much, which is where Jameis gets in trouble. So there is a path to victory with Jameis. There's a path to victory with Derek Carr. I am so intrigued to see what the rest of this week brings because generally by Wednesday we know. Mm. Not this week. And Stay tuned for Thursday because it's going to be fun. And then by our Friday pod, we're going to talk, touch on Alvin Kamara and what we know about this injury report um, when it comes to quarterbacks. So it should be a fun couple days ahead because we still have a lot of stuff to figure out. Eventful Friday on the docket, but today is Wednesday. You still got a couple more days mm-hmm. to uh, check that to check this podcast out, and of course, all of our content on FoxAlive.com, Fox A Live, wherever. <laughs> the Fox 8 Overtime YouTube channel, please. Bingo. Please Leave those comments. Like, subscribe, rate, and review. You can find us wherever you listen to and watch your podcasts. Hit the bell notification button. You get notified whenever we upload a new podcast. For Sean Fazan, I'm Vasilios. This is the Fox 8 Overtime Podcast. We'll catch you guys next time.